No, I don't it, think yeah, yeah. Let's say that viewers should not try that at home. Yeah. Has that been tried? Huh? Has that been tried? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I know that uh, fiber optic uh, cables are more more commonly used. Oh, we're talking about steps. ROVs? Yeah. I thought we were talking about dangling something out of a plane no. at 30,000 feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was saying viewers should not try that at home. <laughs> yes. I don't think any ROVs have gone down to, 30, to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. I think it's just human occupied, right? Um, actually, oh. uh, Breaking news. Nereid. Nereus. Uh, Nereus, yes. Nereus, uh, I but think, right? Did yep. Didn't maybe make, make it, it back. I don't think it, yeah. Uh, but but I, think it it, it, I think it made it... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it made it. It may have been an earlier expedition. The the one where it had met an unfortunate end is the Kermadec. Uh, it was Kermadec. Okay. Uh, but maybe it did, yeah. But I, I do recall uh, here reading an article, too, that other countries have used um, fiber optic um, you know, a cable attached uh, ROVs to get down to those hadal depths, and it actually leads a ton of debris on the seafloor. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the fiber optic cables when they... Yeah, I mean, they use many, many kilometers of yeah. fiber optic cable, and then it ends up being disposable. Oh, that's where it was. It was, um, it was the group that was doing the um, the five deeps. Was uh, They were, I think, in a re recent oh, news, right. news article. Oh, right. Is that EOS? Uh, no, it was... Oh, okay. Yeah, the, he, he, there was an article something recently about you know how much debris there was of fiber optic cables that was causing a hazard for submersibles. Yikes. Oh wow! Try and find that article. Yeah. Was but Marius hybrid? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, with a fiber optic tether. Right. Just or just like unarmored. Right, Spare right, fiber, right. like um, Nui. Yeah. But the, the next, the next generation, at least from what I've heard, is uh, going to be an autonomous vehicle of sorts, uh, similar to the capabilities of Nereus. Orpheus, even. Orpheus is an amazing name for a vehicle that goes to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it's taken this long to get there. Yeah. That's so incredible. Love that. Orpheus can push core now. What's that? Orpheus can push core now. Ooh. Yeah. Who's who's doing Orpheus? That's uh, Woods Woods Hole. Okay. Louis. Yeah. Hmm. Deep Submerge Lab. Yep. They, uh, I think it was last tested a couple of years ago on the Okanus Explorer. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if they tested it recently, but it can do push cores. It can do pre-planned dives. Wow, that's really cool. Someone on the chat is saying that you can actually do a VR tour of Yosemite. Mapped and photographed. That'd be kind of cool to do a VR. And then, Steve, there's a bio question about black corals. So they want to know um, what are some notable symbiotic relationships that you've seen with black corals and other organisms? Uh, black corals are often associated with polychaete worms that live on the center axis of the, of the colony. Um, these are scale worms, types of scale worms. Uh, they're also associated with um, more so crustaceans like squat lobsters than with ophiroids, but occasionally you have ophiroids too. And then for predation, you sometimes you see sea stars uh, eating black coral, but rarely uh, sea stars and sea urchins. So I think that we're 
maybe about uh, less than 10 minutes away from reaching the bottom here. And as we are approaching the bottom, somebody wants to know, what is one thing you dream of seeing? Um, okay. One thing we dream of seeing down here. Other than Dumbo Octopus, I'm like, maybe it's weird, <laughs> saw it. I would be super excited for a sperm whale again, but that's also asking so, so much. It is asking a lot. Or a whale fall. Or a whale fall. Samantha was a naysayer, though, saying that we're not going to see a whale fall on the seamount. <laughs> With its 25 Dumbo octopus but feasting on it. It, it would be <laughs> it would be an extremely lucky yeah, occurrence. Yeah. yeah, that'd be unreal. Yeah, for sure. Um yeah, I mean for me any any whale thing, I would love to see it. I don't think I was out in SPL, but uh still possible, maybe. <laughs> but we're landing on a thirty degree slope at the <laughs> base here, so it'd be very hard to see. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, if you think about it, it's you know you, the whale would have to, you know, whales drift for some time at the surface, you know, off gassing before they actually sink. Um, so presumably, you know, it would have to basically hit a target, you know, that's the tens of kilometers wide, yeah. at, at at most, and um, and then we would have to find it. <laughs> Our swath would be, you know, what's our swath? Like maybe three or four meters wide by whatever our length is, 3.5 kilometers. On a seamount, that's, you know, many, many more multiples, orders of magnitude larger in area. So, you so know. A very slim chance. The odds are not in our favor. Yeah. But there's a chance. But there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> it's probably less. Uh, a greater chance than winning the Powerball, though. But there is a chance. There's a chance. So, uh, someone in the chat wants to know more about the commensal worm that was on the black coral that we collected the other day. Yep. So, it is, uh, it was a request from our scientists ashore to look for the presence of this worm because um, many of these particular species of coral, Bathypathy, Pseudoalternata, have been sampled extensively throughout this area, um, not only throughout Capstone, but also in other, uh, the, the 2015 to 2017 program called Capstone, the campaign to address Pacific monument science technology and ocean needs. Um, but also other collections in the Pacific and this commensal polychaete uh, that is an important diagnostic characteristic for identifying the species was never collected. And so we were able to identify the specimen, collect it, and uh, preserve it for um, eventual examination. But they, they have uh, somewhat of a important relationship on the coral. They uh, perhaps may keep the coral free from parasites uh, and other things that might want to predate up on it. And they also, uh, just on the movement of their bodies up and down the axis of the colony, they um, create these grooves which influences the morphology of the colony and how we might interpret different species of black corals. Someone in the chat says, may the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> Thank you, chat person. Thank you. I'll prove all these people wrong in this control van. We're going to see a whale fall today. Um, and yeah, somebody also wants to know, how long does it take for a whale fall to be consumed? I, I, 
believe it takes a very, very, very long time, um, depending on the size of the whale, uh, up to years at some times. Um, I know that the Nautilus has seen several whale falls on some dives, especially closer to the Monterey Bay area off the coast of California. Um, yeah, and I think that you all have revisited certain whale falls and it was still around, right? So does anybody have an idea of exactly how long or an approximate idea of how long a whale fall would hang out? Yeah, I, I was on the cruise that revisited the whale fall uh, at, at uh, the Monterey Bay uh, sanctuary. Um, I think the takeaway from it was that the scientists were really surprised at how much had degraded in only a couple of years. Uh, and it, it didn't look anything like it had previously. In fact, um, the scientists that were out at the time had permits to collect bits of um, bone material and even the smell was completely gone from the bone. Normally it was a, it was a very putrid smell when they collected the fresh material. Um, but yeah, that, it was very degraded. Yeah. Yeah, there's a highlight video on the, on the Nautilus Iowa website that's pretty incredible showing that, that change over, I think it was two years apart? Two years, yeah. Yeah, it right. was, I, I was on the first cruise that went down and it was a stunning, stunning change. 74 meters off bottom, Roger. Nothing in sonar yet. Adelina starting to pick up the uh, slope behind us. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly where I expected I would see it. Just Great. a little bit later. Yeah, we definitely have C4 in uh, Sonar. Great. Yeah, and it looks like it's at 005, zero five, zero zero five, just like you said. Great. Steve, we're getting another question about black coral. Um, somebody wants to know, what are some organisms that parasitize on them, and what is the method of their parasitism? Uh, it could be uh, 
really any range of organisms that parasitize corals. If there's any tissue loss, for example, uh, organisms might try to settle on, you know, bare skeletal material, uh, hydroids, nice. zoanthids, um, things like these uh, are most common. Are we on the bottom? Yeah. We're on the bottom. We made it. Excuse me. So after about two hours and 16 minutes, we have finally reached the bottom. And again, we are exploring this unnamed seamount in the northwest uh, area surrounding Johnston Atoll. We're at 2986 meters. We'll shower them. Video, are you gonna want to white balance here? I am, yes, please. Okay, cool. After we get like a Doppler reset and everything, I'll set you up. Awesome, thank you so much. And I'll be doing the reset now if that's okay. Yes. Okay, great. Just exposure on the Atalanta. Roger that. Okay, so there's the work. some viewers from Sweden. Thanks for joining us. And some people are wondering, what are we doing down here? What are we exploring? So um, in general, this uh, expedition and a 153 exploring the regions around Johnston Atoll, we are um, mainly looking for biological as well as geological clues about this deep sea area. So what kinds of things are living down here and also um, the rock formations, what can the, any rock samples that we collect tell us about how old this region is or how, how did it form? just kind of uh, surveying, taking a look at the different uh, species that we come across as well as the different uh, geological formations and just seeing if they can tell us anything about this area that has been largely unexplored. Yes. It's a really interesting place to start the dive. I know, I really like it. Yeah. Science, is there anything you're going to want to do before we start heading up slope? Uh, okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, no. Thank you. And if I could get um, lasers off and porch lights on, yes. that'd be amazing. Cool. Lasers are off. Thank you. And it would it be possible to pan just slightly left? Yes. No, no, no. All good. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, it's going to go black for just a sec. ROV team, our viewers want to know Great. if there's any noticeable latency. And white balance, real quick. Uh, no latency. Um, our controls are, basically our control inputs are delivered to the vehicle via fiber optics. So the latency would be speed of light over 7,000 meters, um, which is no latency at all. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Exploration at the speed of light. I like that. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we should be good. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. thank you. And we're on. And we're live <laughs> from the C4. Um, <laughs> do you mind if I take bubble and do some gauges? No. Okay. So ROV uh, science is good to go when you are. Okay. I'm happy to go. I'm happy One to go. You. We're happy to go. Okay. Uh, zero zero five will be our heading as we head up slope. Okay. okay. Um, I'll start off with a 30 meter move at 0 0.2 knots just to see how we proceed. Okay. Then I can bump it up. We're happy? Uh, and we're starting pretty shallow slope and then we get steeper later. Correct. Right? Okay. Uh, morning. Um, we're at the seafloor. Uh, if we could start moving 30 meters, 005 at 0 0.2 knots. Uh, yeah, steepness-wise, Gabby, it's like a little less steep here, but I, I think it's going to be pretty, um, well, if, if the bathymetry is accurate. Okay, cool. But it looks already a little uh, less steep than we anticipated it being. Okay, here. great. In the long term, uh, Nav, we don't have to go through waypoint two. We can kind of uh, round the corner to the east of it. Okay. But just the... Waypoint two kind of takes us. Um, yeah, we we don't have to go through any one of the waypoints. We can kind of parallel along them if we need to. Okay. Are you interested in going up this this ridge next waypoint? Yeah, two, that, that's where I was looking. Great. Yeah, so okay. just just east of two. Perfect. Yeah. That we can do. Yeah, this is the steepest part of the dive, a 30 degree incline. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll be going up to... Can we zoom on this white splotch? Yes, about 2,700, 2800 meters by the time we get to waypoint two. Okay. 
Oh shit. Uh, lasers on. Thank you. Go for zoom. It's in a five four. But in a rock, which is interesting. Yep. And how did it get there? The world is full of mysteries. This is not one we're meant to know. <laughs> uh, it probably settled there somehow and, um, and accumulated sediments from this depression that it's in. Most okay. of these Xenophyophore or Foraminiferans um, compose their bodies, if you will, even though that's not really the term for them, uh, by gluing together uh, bits of sediments. Is that a living specimen? It's really difficult to tell, but um, yeah, it's very difficult to tell. All right, thanks. Cool. So what is a xeno Xenophyophore? It's a single-celled protist animal belonging to the Foraminifera. So these are, you can think of them as like the earliest animal-like forms that evolved on Earth. Really cool. Yeah. Would it be possible to collect a rock sample uh, in this little talus field over here? I was going to say, we got to keep the tradition alive. Yeah, we got to balance. You got to yeah. that sample question it. I yes. asked a couple minutes ago. You got to get an early sample. Well, started with you know. science and ended with, is there anything you want to do here before we move? <laughs> that was back <laughs> five minutes ago. <laughs> I have a better, better view of what you're saying now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a yes These or rocks a no? are special. Yeah. Well, you've lucked out because it looks like RV has enough... Uh, Space and we still have a few minutes before the ship, or before Atlanta starts swinging. So you did luck out. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, it's always the geologist. Always geologist. I, I had to do a double oh, take too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your uh, dramatic know, I, reactions, too. <laughs> do any of these rocks in front of me look nice to you? Uh, uh, that one, maybe. That one. Okay. Hold on, that's not Coming a circle. Down. I think we're also going to have to do bigger moves because we have 10 meters left and I think bigger moves at depth makes more sense. Okay, where are we looking here? On the lasers, I believe. Okay. This is going in the starboard box. Yep. Stop picking up the arm without looking at the jaws. It's a great shot of Herc on Atalanta right now. That's cool. Mm. Let me know if you want any follow in, Gabby. Uh, I would love a little zoom. Cool. I'm going to see if that rock is fractured on the other side. So now you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to keep everybody on their toes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Am I going for the right one here? Yeah. Nick? Yeah. I don't know. Squishy? No squishy? <laughs> I can't, I can't tell from here. Yeah, give it grip force nine. Grip force nine. <laughs> See what it can do. Can you zoom a little bit? Yep. I think we'll take it. Okay. Cool. Can we do a spin? Okay. Yeah, I'll get it in the light here. Jewel case light. QVC this style. This is 140. 140. Okay, you one of the smaller um, port boxes of the starboard bow box? Uh, 
Just one of the inner ones, one of the wee ones? Yep. Ten, okay. ten, 10 to 15. Okay, go wide video. Great. So our viewers online are wondering what are the different jobs in the control room. So uh, yeah, in the front row we have our ROV pilots, Gabby and Karen. We also have Samantha, who's a navigator for this watch, and Logan, who is the video engineer. And then in the back row, that's where I am sitting. I'm one of the science communication fellows, so I'm keeping an eye on the chat asking clarifying questions when I can. Sitting next to me is Nick. Nick is the geologist for this watch. And then we have Steve, who is the watch leader. And then Bronwyn. And Bronwyn is the data logger for this watch. So all different kinds of jobs sitting all together here in this control van. That one in D. Yep, the aftermost little one. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Atlanta's just now started moving. Nice. So. That's awesome. Definitely going to be slow mm -hmm. going here. So science, anything <laughs> else you'd like to do in this area? Maybe. <laughs> Okay, no push forward. Bioscience? Negative. I'm not sure what that hand was from that. <laughs> <laughs> that means look for unbranched corals. Okay. Yes. No, negative. <laughs> Finger bag. I was going to say, yeah, usually <laughs> that, that's when you're scolding someone. I'm trying not to speak okay. with my mouth full. No. I'm all set to go. Awesome. You are. Still working. ROV, I can take that if you want to do okay. the next thing. Thank you. I'm this is not a touch screen, screen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I don't know the if next you move. Knew. Bridge nav. Uh, five zero meters, zero zero five. Is the Hercule the only touch screen? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I try the Atalanta screen every single time. Yeah. And it never works. Why is it just the Hercule then? I don't know. Touch screens are a little danger. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to try and experiment this, this uh, dive at watch change. I want to see how far we've gone from that waypoint 140 okay. to see if it's it aligns with our goal of 220 meters per hour. Okay. We'll see. I'm trying to better fine tune my dive planning skills. Well, it's so dependent on watches too. Mm. On uh, the Cayman and Palmyra cruise, it was a long running, well, a cruise running joke that our H-12 watch couldn't get past 200 meters an hour because we were so slow, so. <laughs> what was that? It was just looking at stuff? Looking at stuff. Just enjoying our time on the seafloor. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, Sounds like a really good use of time. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh, just a lot of, a lot of zooming. Sure. Sure. <laughs> who, who was the watch lead? Steve. <laughs> uh, Adam, uh, school. Well, that uh, that was probably me because I was often on the chat with Adam. Actually, it oh, so it was your fault. Your fault. <laughs> That's yeah. very funny. <laughs> you can't blame the people on the chat. Yes, you can. What? No, you can't. Why not? They're 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 remote. <laughs> they don't they don't exist on the ship. <laughs> it's a straw man. 
<laughs> they, <laughs> they, <laughs> they lurk among us. <laughs> Yeah, this is not the slope that I was anticipating based on the bathymetry. Um, yeah, but we shouldn't let our guard down. Correct. They'll come and bite us. <laughs> like, multi-beam doesn't you. lie. You want it can slope, I'll make mistakes, but it doesn't lie. <laughs> I've been gotten before. True. I've been burned before. <laughs> well, I'm just going to put it in the universe that I... If, if there just happens to be a cliff face full of basalt columns or columnar basalt, I would not be I would upset. I would not be sad either. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to see. Same. There's a beautiful video from, uh, is it Johnston or Baker? One of them. We saw some Johnston last ago. year. We also saw some at 137 last year in Kingdom Palmyra. Okay. Really? Yeah, this was a few years. This was like yeah. 2018. Or no. first uh, yeah, I remember when we were crossing back from Samoa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would have been 2018. We saw some beautiful ones. Yeah. Like but it could have been Jarvis even. Like, who knows? Remember. It was somewhere. It was a whole cliff face with that was covered in huge red stock crinoids and oh. columnar basalt. It was, it was the most stunning like wall yeah, I've there, ever seen. I remember one that was like big and sort of almost cavernous, mm -hmm. like sort of an amphitheater yeah. of basalt wow. columns. Nice. Really cool. It's just so stunning. And it's true that like their molecular structure like mimics their physical structure, right? Like the actual molecules look like really columnar, <laughs> yeah, um, whatever the shape is, like snowflakes. Oh, yeah, I think that's always cool. Are they hexagonal or something like that? Yeah, interesting. That's quite, quite cool. That was Trevor got like um like a hundred and twenty pound like chunk of columnar basalt just like a long that, yeah. hexagon and put it on the porch. Whoa. <laughs> and he's like, we can we can go home with this, but we have to end the dive now. And science was like, no. So that was, that was a little, little sad. I know, Damn. I know. I usually don't question their judgment, but. These are more <laughs> like potatoes. Yeah. And then nuggets, a different size class. Tater tots? <laughs> no, not <laughs> top. Are we dressing on top? Sorry, we haven't had a single barrels. tater tot this cruise, have we? Uh, that used to be a all thing. Year. All really? Year. Steve's, Steve's been rather <laughs> put out about it. <laughs> I think I've heard about it every we, few we days. Swapped, we swapped uh, tater barrels for potato fry. True. Home fries. Up there. Boat fries. Those are good fries. They are great fries. Mm -hmm. They are good, lot. yeah. I would like to have a hot dog on a bun, though. <laughs> We've had hot dogs you're for asking breakfast. A, you're asking a lot there. You just have to wait one more hour. We've yeah. had hot dogs. <laughs> We've had them for breakfast, but we haven't had a... Pretzel dog. Yeah. Pretzel dog. Yeah, Steve made pretzel dog happen the other day. I, I took inspiration from someone else. Uh. <laughs> Go for Zoom. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Shall not be named. Credit where credit's due. So, Nick, a few minutes ago, oh, we collected nice a rock. Uh, what is that? Oh, is that okay. a homolid for sure? Talk about with an anemone backpack or okay. some other kind of backpack. Mm. Yep. Can we get a better shot of the back nope. of that? Yeah. Yeah, one second. So, come down. Over to you, Gabby. Go for Zoom. Yeah. So that's uh, some sort of maybe a hermit crab, maybe a homolid. Uh, I don't know what's on its back. Are we full Zoom? Or full Zoom. It could be a zoanthe that's just sucked in its polyps. Very small though. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Go wide, please. Thank you. So, a hermit crab with either an anemone, a zoanthid, or what else did you say? Uh, I, I, I think it's a zoanthid. Oh, okay. You know, so, this is a parapagurid um, hermit crab with a likely a zoanthid on its back. I noticed a couple of different spots for polyps. Um, so it's not an anemone.
We did um, get some really good imagery of one of those earlier in the cruise. Uh, might have been a bit shallower. And I know that we've collected one very similar uh, individual from King Meadow and Palmyra last year. I remember it very clearly. Yeah, the shots we got of the earlier one were really cool. Yeah, really awesome. That was there was a couple on that dive. Mm -hmm. That was great. There are there's a surprising um, striking similarity between benthic communities in this area and Kingman Palmyra. I mean, we're basic. This is basically an extension of the Line Islands. Um, geographically, if not geologically. An extension of the Line Islands, and it's also very close to the Mid-Pacific Mountains. Uh, and those are both uh, thought to have been formed by either uh, some kind of plume uh, source, mantle plume source, or possibly a plume ridge interaction with an uh, ancient uh, tectonic plate. I think I did extend it earlier. I didn't verify that it had gone all the way. Okay. I, I didn't like I, like all right, so just catching up on some questions like way, in okay. the chat. Uh, why is Hercules tethered to Atalanta? Excellent question. So yeah, again, we are using two ROVs on this dive. We have Atalanta as well as Hercules. Hercules is the main ROV that we're using, the one that you are seeing um, on channel one. That is the view from Hercules. And then on channel two, you're seeing the view from Bridge ROV now. Atalanta. Uh, we can add another five zero meters, zero zero five. So Hercules and Atalanta are tethered together uh, via a 30 meter tether. So Hercules is exploring the seafloor. Atalanta is hovering about 30 meters above Hercules and keeping an eye on Hercules and just giving the pilots a better idea spatially of where Hercules is. And then Atalanta is tethered to the ship that we are all sitting on right now. So they all kind of need to work together in tandem. A lot of these smaller sized pillow basalt, like you said, potato sized almost. Occasional boulder, lots of marine sediment. There is a shrimp down there in the middle, just on just below the lasers. Shrimp. Oh yeah. First I'll on the shrimp count down. of the day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so do we start a new count? Is that it? New I don't count know for what's going on anymore. I think we have a new count for okay, per dive. There's two shrimp, actually. Yep. Two shrimp. Yep, two shrimp. <laughs> the shrimp count lives on. I love it. How else would we keep track of time? So I have a bit <laughs> of a dilemma. Uh-oh. If we oh, have... Nice. Oh, so that's... Um, You want to talk about it, Stu? <laughs> <laughs> We're here for you. No, I'm, I'm looking up a species name. I, I'll come back to that idea. Okay. That's cool. Very conveniently coming to the same place. Mm -hmm. All right, very nice. Cool. What type of shrimp is this? Steve with the legs rather than yeah I I'm, I'm blanking on uh, the name right now I'm looking it up oh I see this is the dilemma <laughs> Said no dilemma. actually the dilemma is what happens when you go to the mess line and you see that there's shrimp for dinner <laughs> oh. yeah. do you count them or do you not count them <laughs> those are uncountable <laughs> shrimp those don't count the, the criteria <laughs> is very very unclear <laughs> We only count shrimp that are in the water. That's what I've been going off of, at least. Logan, is wire cam in black and white now? Or are we like in <laughs> it, a different it universe? Has, I, yeah, it has done that on okay. occasion. Interesting. Um, that does sound right. Yeah, so Gabby was saying, I mean, and yeah, it does do that sometimes. It'll yeah. use uh, low light conditions. It'll be 
black and white so that you can see better. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it just nice. updated. Thanks. Was that you, Samantha? Oh. You got the magic touch. Oh. 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 Anybody watch? <laughs> that reminded me of the song in Shrek when she's singing to the birds and they are and the explode. exploding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Sounded like the Little Mermaid. Thank you. I, I'll, you know, I'll take it all. That's great. <laughs> so it's interpretive. Of these, <laughs> how would you characterize these flows? Low bait or pillow? pillows? I would say they're pillow. Yeah, but it's getting into low bait territory. Crusty, crusty yeah. pillow. What's the What's the line? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I guess you just eyeball it. And Make a decision. Okay. Science. <laughs> That's how science, science. works. Um, so, yeah, um, a few minutes ago we did collect a rock, and some of your viewers want to know what was special about that rock. Um, we're, we're, we're still going to determine if it's special or not, if it's datable, if it has, mm -hmm. you know, those characteristics of uh, the certain mineral phases and uh, lacking the alteration, uh, but uh, the, the the reasoning behind that rock in particular is to get uh, samples at different depths, and since it's the beginning of the dive, I wanted to grab a sample that is representative of uh, the lower part of the seamount, and uh, try to collect some in regular intervals, or if we see a nice talus debris field, uh, maybe collect a couple samples at those locations. Just curious, can you zoom uh, here? If you have a second. Yeah. There's a little white dot in yes. uh, the rock. Coming down. The thing I like to keep an eye out for here are um, discolorations in the rock surface uh, that would indicate scouring of. Oh. Sediment. Okay, sure. same. So dark, dark patches because those might indicate feeding traces of critters, and that's just sediment. So okay, that's it. Maybe a xenophyophore. That might be something quite small there. Yeah, it is interesting to see these uh, rocks that are. You know, not covered with sediment when the surrounding area is, is extensively covered. Right. <coughs> so speaking of sediment, we are going to a question about the sediment. Um, is it kind of like dust, like an abandoned house is covered with dust? Or is it something else? Yeah, I mean, you could think of it that way. Um, it's probably a little bit more cohesive than that. There's probably biofilms that would start to form on, on the rocky surfaces, so that would make things potentially stick to them more easily. And those biofilms just happen to be really yummy food sources for a lot of benthic invertebrates. Yum, yum. Yeah, so if any of our viewers have noticed that occasionally it looks like there's a lot of tiny white specks that seem to be floating around in the water column. That's called marine snow, and that is made up of mostly organic material that has been sloughed off by all kinds of organisms. Um, you, can, you can think of it like dust, like organic dust, that uh, eventually makes its way down to the ocean floor. And so that kind of accumulates on these rocks and makes that biofilm that Steve was mentioning. There can also be uh, more physical explanations for that. For example, if in part of the rock seems to be higher than the surrounding rock, it could 
induce a, a topographically accelerated current. So when water moves around a, a bump in the seafloor, it speeds up. Um, and that, for that reason, you can end up with uh, higher scour in certain spots. So again, we are currently exploring an unnamed seamount and a viewer has an excellent question. Will it get a name? What factors determine if a feature gets a name and who gets to name it? The, the seamount? Yeah. Um, there is a process. Uh, I think it's moderated through uh, uh, JEPCO or an association of JEPCO. Uh, but usually there's a there's a formal package that has to be submitted that includes multi-beam or some sort of bathymetry and rationale uh, and characterization for the site. Um, but that would be a good question. I think Rob uh, on the next watch would be better suited to answer that. Rob watch. And then Emmett wants to know, hi Emmett, we uh, are looking at some green dots on the screen in the middle there on the on channel one. So those are lasers. We use those in order to measure what we are seeing. So those lasers are spaced 10 centimeters apart and it gives us an idea of how large or small whatever we're taking a look at is. Yeah, is what are you looking at? No, never. No. Thought I saw something. Yeah, I, I, most of the time when I think I see something, it's a xenophyre fork. Uh, is that something or is that a patch of sediment? How look. I'm not sure oh. if that's three dimensional. I think it's sediment. Yep, I guess. Okay, sediment. Never mind. Okay. Xenophyre forest, yeah. The most abundant thing here. And again, a xenophyophore, Steve, you said is a single-celled organism. It's like one of the most primitive life forms on Earth. Yeah, it's a single-cell life form. Um, not not a not a bacteria, not a uh, uh, and not one of these more basal organisms, but um, you know, probably the precursor to a lot of the animals. Uh, especially the lower metazoans. It's super interesting. I, whenever I think of a single-celled organism, I think of something microscopic. So it's cool to see this with the naked eye. Bridge, no? The interesting thing is I'm not even seeing very much debris at all. Five zero meters, zero zero five. No sponge rubble yet, none of that kind of stuff. Looks like you're starting to see a little bit larger pillow basalts, maybe cannonball size. It's definitely steepened up a little bit. Somebody's asking, is this area considered a low... Can we zoom uh, here if you have a minute? Yeah, absolutely. Is this considered a low life region? Um, great question. So we just got to the bottom uh, maybe a little less than 30 minutes ago. So we still don't okay, know. Zoom. We expect this dive is going to last for about 20 hours or so. So we're still taking a look around. Okay, for zoom whenever you're happy. This is Dave. I'm just taking over in video for login. Welcome, Dave. Happy Dave. Okay. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be nice working with you. It's uh, a little early in the morning, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you so for I'll being here. To you. <laughs> yeah. if you don't hear anything from me, just uh, <laughs> throw something at me. All right. <laughs> I have my spray bottle ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, science, uh, can you circle that again? 
Dave, can we get a zoom? Yeah, sorry. What are we going to do? <laughs> okay. What are we zooming on? Here? On the uh, left. Uh, just on the side. Yeah, okay. Sediment splotch. Okay. Sorry for all the drama. I'm going to reset DVL while we're here. That's okay. okay. Come wide, please. Yes. Sorry. No worries. I didn't hear you. The past few dives, especially the ones that we've been doing that have been starting deeper in the 2000s, up to maybe 3,000 meters, um, have been relatively poorly characterized compared to the other depths, uh, shallower it's been maybe 2,500 meters in the in the area of the monument, and a lot of the fauna that had previously uh, examined, uh, you know, typically we're larger structure forming species like deep water corals and sponges, but there's a lot of life down here that we found over the past couple of days uh, that lives on the sides of rocks and. Uh, are associated with rocky bits. There's a rodalid uh, dandelion, Hi. too. Come back. You do a quick snap zoom on that, but uh, yeah. only if we have time. Yeah, of course. We can identify it from this far away. So what exactly is a sea dandelion? What kind of organism is it? It's a siphonophore. So that's a, rel a distant relative of jellyfish. So cool. Okay, for Zoom. Nice. Oh, a dandelion. <laughs> All right. Cool. Nice. Okay. Come on. I haven't seen a single coral yet, or a sponge. I know. It's unusual. Thank you, Caroline, for the kind words. It means a lot. And then we have a viewer from Denmark who is wondering, what powers the ROV? So um, the ROV is getting its power from the ship, and that's all I know, <laughs> unless our ROV pilots want to elaborate some more about that. Say again? What is powering the ROV exactly? The ship is powering the ROV. Um, the ship produces 480 volt AC in three phases um, and we convert that to 2400 volt three phase before sending it down 7,000 or I don't know thousands of meters of wire to where the ROV is. So, Nav, how are we doing on Can distance from uh, sample 140? Stand by, let me check. We're going to pilot half an hour. here. Oops. We are 116 meters. Beautiful. That's exactly where we want to be. 
double that, you end up with 232 meters, which is just above our average pacing. Here's your little buddy. It's a strange texture. Yeah. Would this be considered like a sheet flow? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I think so. Sheet flow. Sheet flow. A little bit of debris now, though. Yeah, those are pretty well sorted. Yeah, they are. They're kind of overlying the sediment, which is also somewhat strange. Science, is there any interest in the next, let's say, five to ten minutes to collect anything here? Or should we keep moving? I think if we were going to go for a rock, we wouldn't need to stop the ship. Great. I think, um, we've got some. We've got some room. Karen's fast. I think we're okay for right now on a rock collection. Great. Your answer has been recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to grab one on that last talus field, but... Uh, there, there's a disclaimer right in front of him. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if we were in the previous talus field that we were just in, I would, I would say definitely yes, but these rocks are a little bit... They're, they're very rounded, and like Steve said, very well sorted. Yeah. Bridge, no? We can add another five zero meters to zero zero five. Can you... Um, drop a target here just for curiosity uh, sure. later and just say um, patchy slope nuggets. Yeah. Geology, is there any uh, other phrases you want to use? <laughs> Sounds good to me. I, I, I want to mark it down because I don't want to use the scoop just yet because I'm I think we're aiming for something that was, you know, more tr more of like these um, fields okay. of uh, of things, and I mean, some of this, this actually is, looks this pretty is cohesive. Pretty close. Yeah. Do you want to reiterate patchy slope nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> could say rounded and well sorted as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That use the geology terms. Don't use the biology terms. <laughs> 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 The next watch is going to be like, what were these Patches people? Of nuggets. They'll know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. I just, um, I am curious though, is there a chance we can <laughs> touch, right, okay. touch, like just touch the seafloor to see if these are loose or if it's like You'd like a, a poke of science? Do you think that they're cohesive? I, mean, I think they the, may be. These ones so over here don't look cohesive. Yeah. These look like they a may be. A poke of science? Yeah, a poke of science say. over here, please. Here, just I'm gonna, I'm checking back in here. Just with the skids is fine. Pull out the meter stick if you skid. have one. <laughs> oh, Steve, you said just with the sled? Not yeah, yeah, we don't, okay. have, we don't have to poke it. Okay. I just want to like land and uh, Can you see the porch, uh, Steve? Because yeah. the, the porch might be where you're gonna get your info from. Yeah, yeah, I, I see it. I'm also porch? looking down, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're really loose, okay. Ooh, I took a sample for you. Okay. Porch <laughs> grab. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Very steep. Yeah. So, you know, nice. For for what we usually find these at. <laughs> the boop of science, says the chat. Science boop. That's bow up. <laughs> bow up. The yes. bow up of science. <laughs> Very nice flow structures here. Maybe there was be more like a beds of these things upslope. Maybe they're fallen. Somebody wants to know what is the mechanism that sorts the different sizes of rocks and why does the discount its value as a sample? Um well, in this environment, I would say the primary sorting would be um, through uh, 
um, some kind of mass wasting event. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell, especially with these with these little nodules. Um, even how they formed, are they erosional features or um, are they little pieces of, of lava that solidified individually in, in very small, uh, very small sample sizes? And and why would they do that? Um, it's uh, it's it's not well understood, and it's kind of one of the reasons we're we're trying to collect these these uh, what we're calling them nuggets. Nuggets. Yeah. And like I mean, it, it, they are a sample consideration, but we also realize we, c we only have one scoop, uh, so we have one shot, uh, and it's very early on yeah. in the 20-hour dive, so it's good to make notes of things and maybe hold and sample at a more opportune, opportune location, perhaps, if there's a source of these things or if there's another uh, more extensive bed uh, th that's more characteristic of the site. Um, and perhaps this small area is. Nick, can you go back and uh, can you explain what you mean by a mass wasting event? It sounds yeah. spooky. Yeah, um, so a mass wasting event is going to be any type of faulting or, um, you know, rock fall uh, due to gravitational collapse mm -hmm. of a particular area that will uh, create a kind of uh, a spill or a runoff of, of rocks, and um, that may sort out the rocks, but typically it won't do as good of a job as what we're seeing, uh, as, as, as well-rounded and well-sorted as these rocks are. Um, and it's interesting to see an evolution of, you know, smaller to kind of those larger potato size, now back to a smaller golf ball size. Um, and, you know, it's just trying to understand the morphology of, morphology of, of, of these little nodules. Well, I'd say we've seen a lot of you know, beds of nodule-like nuggets in the past, but I've never seen them on a, yeah. on a hard slope like this. I mean, it's pretty clear that the sediment is just a thin veneer, um, yeah. but that they're accumulating and that they're loose. Yeah, is I think noteworthy for this site. They're loose and they're not as covered by the sediment as you might expect, which is kind of hints towards maybe some kind of recent mass wasting or or some other event that that caused them to collapse or or fall down the slope. Relatively recent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, not a, not a large college party, <laughs> somebody says in the chat. Mass wasting event is different than that. And then another question for you, Nick. Um, on these dives so far, have any portion of the seamounts um, been above sea level at some point? Hmm. That I can't explain definitively. It's a very strong possibility. I think drilling course would probably be the best evidence for that. And it says not an OEP. What is it? ODP? Program? Okay. ODP. Um, yeah, um, that, that's going to take a lot of you know, sea level rise, sea level fall, a lot of erosion. Um, as the plates uh, cool away from the oceanic ridge, uh, mid ocean ridge, then they'll uh, sink as they get denser. Um, so there's different mechanisms which can cause uh, a, a seamount. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you, buddy. I, I, how else am I going to say it? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is how can it's Can I get the cans? It's defined. Right, you can, you can have a, this you is can how have it's pass. defined. You a sub-aerial seamount, OK? <laughs> uh, it's, it's these are one camera? of the mechanisms uh, yeah, I, that I I'm use. Yeah, I'm one of the cam for that moment. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have uh, erosion, uh, subsidence, and uh, you know, sea level rise and fall, which can affect uh, the um, possibility of a seamount being above water level or not. 
Right, above, above water your effort. level. I, you know, <laughs> I tried to avoid it. That was good. I feel Why like use so many words when you can just use one? I just feel like the chat is setting me up at this point. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got you guys are in, in cahoots. <laughs> question that I'm interested in as well. Somebody wants to know, have we ever found crystals such as quartz on the seafloor? Probably not quartz. Um, quartz is more of one of those evolved minerals. That's, that's the most recent word of the watch. Um, <laughs> evolved. <laughs> uh, you're going to see more um, olivines um, that are, if they're still fresh, you'll see um, clinoperoxines, orthoperoxines. Uh, some calcium plagioclase, uh, not too much quartz, not too much um, potassium feldspar. Uh, those are minerals that are in indicative of a, of a more mature melt that um, has undergone uh, primary, uh, undergone multiple phases of uh, melting episodes um, to a more evolved magma. Magma source. Yeah. It's starting to make a little bit more sense why we're not seeing as much biology here. I mean, if these are loose, yeah, mm. uh, you're not going to have things attached to them and remain stable for very long. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters one one. Uh, sorry, zero one zero. So ROV, I'm just going to do um, some slight adjustments to get us a little more to the northeast. Loosey goosey rocks. This is a really good question. Um, so, underwater volcanoes, right? Why don't they have craters like we see on land, land volcanoes? Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. Maybe they just, they, they just haven't, uh, they don't have the sufficient mass at that point um, to have some kind of caldera collapse, which is basically uh, uh, an expression of uh, the eruption cycle. Um, it could be due to the overlying water um, column uh, that uh, reduces the probability of a collapse. I'm not sure, to be honest. That's a good question. Um, I have to think about that a little bit more. Uh, oh. Can we um, look back at the bottom of that front row? Hello. Go ahead. Good. Can we go back to the, the boulder we just passed? Boulder, Roger. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's kind of in this direction. Ooh, I think the reason we're kind of moving so fast is there's current coming up the slope. It's like oh, doesn't want to go back. So uh, interesting to note. That makes sense. I think it's this boulder on the down current yeah. side. Great. There was something a right, little patch. right here. I thought I saw something branching. Yeah. Down. Are you the same? Uh, down tri -flops or normal? No, there's no triclops. Oh, no triclops. Rather. Nothing there? Uh, I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. False alarm. Okay, go wide. Good eyes, though. There's a, there are some splotches, though, that might represent locations where coral bases uh, may have been attached or sponge Video bases. Oh, yeah, perfect. Thanks. But I'm not seeing yeah. um, kind of the evidence that I would expect here. Do you have any still cam going right now? No, no okay. unfortunately. Uh, still cams, Steve's eye view is down for the dive. Radar. My eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Your precious eyes. Yeah, our viewers online, I know that um, sometimes we do have the dive information on the uh, side of the homepage. So like how deep is Hercules, what is the temperature and things like that. So I'm sorry that's not available right now, but if you go to the homepage on the right-hand side where it says technology, you scroll down a bit, 
you can click on where it says more data and that should take you to a window where you can access that information. So currently Hercules is 2,906 meters below and the temperature is 1.6 degrees Celsius. I think we can um, drop another target here. This looks more consistent and just call it like, I don't know. Consistent nuggets? Consistent nugget shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is like a random password generator. Or <laughs> 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 Reddit names. It's, it's, it's like a sand channel, but with nuggets, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one of like our uh, sand scientists ashore are giving us a little uh, assist on uh, that last question, Brittany. Uh -huh. uh, that uh, craters are found um, in some underwater seamounts. Uh, and they are due to the magma chamber collapsing from an explosive eru eruption. And you don't find explosive eruptions as much underwater. Can we uh, look left? Yep. Typically due to the composition, um, though you will see uh, uh, some eruptions from Anything volatile content. So yeah, can we look a little bit more left? Any type of dissolved uh, like gases like like across the carbon slope, dioxide yeah. and oh, okay. water vapors yep. will cause a, an explosive eruption, which is uh, probably what um, our scientist ashore might be referring to, uh, whereas on the um, continental settings you'll see like uh, a lot more fells yeah, and lavas, uh, which are uh, uh, we may feldspars set and up silicas a sample that here. will help contribute to explosive eruptions. Okay, um, can I get a little more in the zoom bank here yeah. to do that? Yep. What yeah. kinds of things do you want to sample so here? So we're, we're going to just follow this uh, slope of nuggets material until you feel comfortable to do a scoop. Okay. Do you, we're good without, without a ship stop? So, uh, for the scoop, I don't know, how are you feeling? Do you want a ship stop or can you? Um, I think I can do it. Scoop and okay. go. Sounds good. Okay. Because um, we have, um, Steve, would it all have to be from the same place or do we have options to like get up and move to the next? Uh, yeah, I, I don't bit? think we have to stay in one place to okay. do a scoop. I think we can scoop and fly. Okay, I'll get out ahead as far as I can and so we'll have as much time as possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have a. But w when you're stable, I have another suggestion. Rather than use the scoop, if we can just pick up a handful of these things and put them in the forward box. Hmm. Uh, we might need to do it a couple times, but we're trying not to use the scoop so early in the dive, but we okay. want to get right. some samples of this. So That's a good idea. if we okay. get a few of them in the forward box. Uh, that would be fine. Okay. That might take a bit more time. <laughs> so maybe uh, if okay. we have a little bit more time, just okay. if I'm going to pick up like one little nug at a time. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. 15 meters left on the move, so we could also just let it run out. Okay. And I am way out in front, so... I think we'll just let the move run out. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Because we're also... I also don't want to yeah. run out of... What are we calling them? Nuggets? Nuggets. 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 Nugget field. Okay. Okay, I'm going to sit <laughs> down here. Okay. Or, um, I don't know, th this is crazy now, but you could use the push core and kind of just like fill it up and then dump it in the bio box. But Steve's freestyling. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I mean, we could try. That's up to you. Whatever you feel comfortable with, we don't want to linger more than is needed, but we just want to get a okay. few of these. I, I, have you seen a push core hold the nodules? My instinct is that the push core won't hold the nodules, but uh, yeah. we can... If you use it as a scoop, I've seen it done, but it's... Oh, okay. Use it as a scoop. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> but if it's wow. if it's just easier to grab the thing, I would just grab the thing. I think it would be easier just to grab it, but um, I'll have a go. And then whichever is best. We're getting plenty of samples on the porch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going rogue on this dive. Yeah, why don't we... Uh, can we just have like a like a cow catcher or something. Yeah, that just like absolutely. Uh, dumps things into In uh, mesh bags under yeah. under the, yeah. yeah. All right, so just any anything like here? Anything, yeah. Okay. If you get four or five, that's probably good. And we're going into the front box? Yep. Is that nothing? Small. Is that one? 
or none. Yeah, I think that's I think one. That's one. Okay. Not yet. Pick, picking up M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. All right. A couple more, maybe. Okay. Are you okay with your camera view there? Yeah. Okay. I'm very happy. Thanks. Uh, it must be locked. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Okay. Ship has stopped. Great. We're in a good position. We have plenty of time. Like, Atalanta can go over the top. Like, Maybe it's one, not too steep. one more uh, handful. Okay. Someone online is asking, have we ever seen a giant squid and sperm whale fight? Hmm. Huh? No. I don't, has, I don't think anyone has ever seen it. Uh -huh. I think that we know about it because of the sucker marks on the sperm whales. Is that yeah. possible? And yeah. inside the sperm whales are giant squid beaks. So. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah, I mean, they eat the whole squid, That'll right? Be good. Yeah. Be happy? Wow. Oh, yeah, happy. Okay, cool. Okay. This is sample 141. That'd be pretty amazing to see. Uh, I counted five nuggets. Five nuggets. What are our favorite animals? I like whales a lot. Really? You have I that do. much? <laughs> I know. Uh, Samantha, what's okay. your favorite animal? Oh. Ready to go? <laughs> huh? I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was just snarking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, love I have squid. so many samples on the front porch right now. Uh, but also, bonus I haven't mentioned. Yeah, here I'll show you. Yeah, I, I always thought yours was squid. Definitely squid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if that's if I can, if I'm only allowed one, we may have to do, <laughs> we may have to do some uh, some sweeping, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Got some extra weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they won't stay on for recovery, otherwise I'd just call them samples. Yeah, there are quite a few on there, I just noticed. Oh, oh yeah, goodness. there's a lot. I, here, see? Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. All we need and is a little cuts. cage and we could collect all of those. Such a nicely, nice sorting grate. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, wonder, I mean, panning. we have like a little drawer that comes out. I can get out in front and you can do some sweeping again. Get the... Oh, shovel drawer. Oh. <laughs> How far are you going? How far am I going? Yeah. Uh, I was just going to get out in front again. Are we collecting more? No, I got I think we should clean off the porch. We've got a whole bunch of samples on the oh, front okay. porch. Can I put another move then if we're done sampling? Uh, yeah. Science, are we done you sampling here? Oh, stand by for science. Okay. Hi, science. Are we done sampling here? Hi, sorry about that. We're having a little science meeting. Uh, I'm good. Yep, you? all set. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Happy? Yeah, Order. totally. Bridge now. Okay. Karen, you want to do some cleanup? Uh, five zero yeah, meters, I can do. zero one zero. Just get a little more. What did science Does decide back there? Say again? If there was a science meeting. New decisions? We don't have to get all of them, yeah. just... Science, so uh... Secret science, maybe? <laughs> Secret <No>. science. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're going to get... Is there a known max depth for the ROV? Yeah, I believe that the maximum depth for Hercules is 4,000 meters. Uh, and Atalanta can go to 6,000 meters. 6,000 for Atalanta. You don't have a little broom attached to the porch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need it. I mean, if we had the T-Boss, that would be ideal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, well. 
It just looks like fun to do. Underwater golf. Putt putt. Yeah, if we get the ones in the middle there off, then I think we're okay. It won't it won't look so incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Where have you been driving? <laughs> I mean, we could just write it in the sample diagram, you know, porch uh, porch rock sample. We might get if a few might make it through recovery. Yeah. That's fine. I think it'd be nice if we had like a little weaved basket, kind of like a, a bicycle. Yep. Just watch the, the line there. Yeah. That's a With drop little yeah. like frillies Thanks. coming off the side. I think yeah. we're probably we're probably pretty good at that yeah. point. It looks good. It looks tidier. Okay, I get going. Uh, off porch. Thanks. Uh -huh. Nick, what's your favorite animal? Sea animal or otherwise? Uh, well. I'm gonna have to go. Otherwise, uh, snow leopard is my favorite. Animal. Ooh, love snow leopards. Those are gorgeous. They really are. Have very you ever elusive. seen one? Uh, no, I mean I've seen pictures. And they're they're very elusive, very hard to find in the wild. Yeah. Good choice. Thanks. <laughs> uh, brown one. One four one was nodules. Yep. Thanks. Can you zoom out, um, Matt? Yeah. So. We haven't reached waypoint two, right? For like Correct. Hours? We are waypoint two is at the top there. Let me see our distance. We've gone two hundred and fifty meters. Okay. All right, giving you back Logan now. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, yep. Dave. Enjoy breakfast. Sponge. Oh, what's that? What's up? Um, nothing. It's probably oh. dead sponge, just at the yeah. bottom. There's yeah. a little gelatinous. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're talking sponge. about. We can check. Just There's got a little it. jelly or something there. The first just make big sure it's sign not a whale of life, bone. actually. I know. Uh, Other than those shrimp. Is Where it was that jelly? jelly? It's uh, above the dead sponge in the little sediment area. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for zoom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this the, no, it's similar to the one that was, um... I know the one you're thinking of, the one that had its tentacles the up, one new species, up. yeah. Yeah, no. This one has, I think the new species only has three, though. This one is. Yeah. Five. No, I think it's a different group, too. Yeah. Cool. That Very cool. cool. Okay, go Very wide. Cool. Good eye. Yeah. I'm always looking out for the midwater critters. I should have brought my glasses on this ship. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just over here trying to squint. Nice. Narco Medusa. Shrimp. 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 That miss anything lovely? Shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the answer I need. <laughs> Just missed. Uh, we had some porch nuggets that we were sweeping <laughs> off. <laughs> Incredible. Shoot nuggets. They were really cute. Yeah, there's a lot here. It's, uh, it makes me wonder what's at the top of this. If they're yeah. something, if, are they features that are falling or are they features that are wow. just accumulating, this precipitating in situ? Oh, what's that on the rock to the right? A little blurb. 
very, very crusty, though. Where are you looking? To the uh, bottom very right. Very smooth That's texture okay. rock. Almost. <laughs> I had com <laughs> gone completely off the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't touched them in Who's ages. Who's this thing? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> the current. The current, yeah. yeah. Current buoyancy. Quite, yeah, quite a lot of It's current. much, like Dan always says, like, it drives a lot better when I'm not touching it. Something. Is that dead something? Am I seeing things? Uh, that's yeah. the end, isn't it? There's a there's a base of something. Where are you looking? That's an old base of a coral or sponge there. Did you want to zoom on it? Uh, half zoom if you can. Not that we'll be able to tell Go much, zoom. but it's it's the only possibly biologically notable big thing here. Okay, go yeah. away. Okay. Sponges and corals are pretty sparse. Um, we saw some sponge debris, which is good. That's a good sign. The sponge base uh, disc fragments remains are also uh, pretty useful at identifying some, some pre pr either current or previous uh, presence of those large structure forming species. So we are one hour since uh, MA 153 140. Can you get me a distance? Yep. Uh, Two seventy five, let's say. Amazing. Wow. We're we're giving the next watch plenty of uh, plenty of uh, extra time to laze laze along. Bridge now. This is interesting. I feel like this is a different kind of rocky assemblage than we we've seen other places. Zero meters to zero one zero. Geologists confirmed in that. <laughs> confirm. Call me crazy. <laughs> confirm. Thank you. Thank you. Can confirm. Can confirm. Um, yeah, so lots of nuggets. The chat wants to know, are these nodules solid manganese, or do you believe that they might be a manganese crest over something else? We cut some open yesterday and on uh, previous dives, and they appear, uh, some of the larger ones seem to, well, relatively larger, I should say, seem to have a little bit of basalt matrix in there, uh, which is indicative of being a, a rock. Um, some of the smaller ones I, I assume would probably be ferromanganese, but our, we don't have a trim saw. Our saw is a little bit too big to cut those little rocks, and I don't want to take my finger off. Uh, so I haven't really got a chance to uh, cut open those smaller ones, but I might just take a hammer to it and see what <laughs> happens that way. Smash. Ooh. Yeah. Fun. Geologist tools. <laughs> But uh, yeah, some of them definitely uh, have a little bit of a salt matrix in them. I would say a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Um, cool. Cut a couple of them open. I think uh, on our earlier dives, we did cut open one that was appeared to be mostly ferromanganese. I, I don't know, I, I don't have the experience or expertise to say whether or not it's full ferromanganese. Um, but we definitely see some kind of like volcanoclastic, uh, glassy uh, matrix uh, inside a lot of these um, completely altered ferromanganese rocks. Oh, here's some biology. Sponge. Hmm. Ooh. Oh. First I've seen in a while. Yeah. Formerly known as sponge. Maybe. <laughs> oh, maybe dead sponge. Oh. Yeah. Formerly yes. known as sponge. Oh. Formerly known as sponge. Oh. Go for Zoom. Some kind of dead sponge base. Yeah. Still can't make enough, <laughs> make out enough about uh, the debris we've been seeing to okay. potentially put an identification on these, but it's a stalked sponge of some type. I'm really amazed, though, how much of this, um, these nuggets that we're seeing. Yeah, it's, it's very it's crumbly. The highest density we've seen probably on any of our dives. Up yeah, you point. can actually see the the distribution pretty well on Atalanta. Yeah. Sometimes I wish we can just 
and turn up the, the brightness and just see the entire um, camera of Atlanta, Atlanta um, and see how, how massive these seamounts really are. Yeah. I mean, we're basically climbing mountains every time we do a dive. Just going on a hike. Yeah. It's exhausting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Exploration by the seat of your, seat of your pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do not have the Triclops or Cinema Cam today, unfortunately. Wish we did, but we do not. Um, and then Matthias from Germany. Hello, thanks for watching. Uh, Matthias wants to know how thick do you think that the manganese crust is on top of these seamounts? Uh, hi, Matthias. Uh, yeah, we've actually been cutting open our samples on um, on our rocks after each dive, and typically seeing, I would say, about one to two centimeter um, crusts, depending on the seamount. Um, some of these seamounts vary in age, and uh, you would expect to see more precipitation of those crusts on those older seamounts. Uh, some have very thin veneers. Um, uh, I would say the the, the largest crust that we've seen on a sample was probably about four or five centimeters, and that's a very interesting sample to, uh, to see if we can get an age on. Um, not necessarily saying that it's older, but you know the precipitation rate of the ferromanganese crust is indicative of, of an older rock. This is a cool feature. This is a really yeah, cool feature. Interesting texture. Maybe a lava tube? Um, I don't know. See it almost it. looks like like nodules were forming here and didn't quite you know separate maybe it's very hard to tell uh science is it more helpful for me to be higher off the bottom for you to see like more macro structures are you still or do you want me to be low down i i, I think where you're at right now is good okay yeah this would this is sort of higher this is like three to four meters off the bottom okay yeah Unless, you know, Steve needs to <laughs> yeah. see some I, marine life. I, I totally uh, disagree. I, I don't know. Yeah, you guys can fight <laughs> it out. For him, so yeah, I don't <laughs> know if you want to out. Whoever's louder or yeah. whoever I hear oh, no. better Rock, will paper, win. scissors yeah. or the... Rock always wins. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going to do rock every time, that's... that's <laughs> <a good game>. <laughs> 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 All right, I should say lava always wins. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it, it's okay to do, like go between once yeah. in a while and yeah, yeah up and down up and down. <laughs> Completely. Cool. Let's be honest, there's not a lot of marine life. <laughs> so here. he's throwing rock. That's a that's a fabulous joke. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna know how to beat a geologist? Yeah. <laughs> Play him with rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that's good. <laughs> we do not have a cinema cam, but we do have bow cam. A sunrise cam. Oh, oh. Sunrise, sunrise cam. cam. Let's see it. Lovely. Wow. A good one today. Heavenly. Oh, that looks oh, beautiful. Wow. All those rays. Amazing. Well, mm -hmm. After talking about yesterday how there was not a cloud in the sky uh, at sunset and how amazing the stars were going to be, I then oh, proceeded fish. to do absolutely nothing <laughs> related to the stars. Fish? No, not fish. What is that? Uh, you can see. Oh, Goopy thing? No? Oh. <laughs> that part Go of our zoom? matrix of goo and ooze? Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> the uh, matrix of goo and ooze. What okay. are we looking at? Uh, uh, yeah, what is that? That's a living matrix of goo and ooze. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's, I don't think that's living. It's a biological really? mucus. Yeah. Huh. Okay, mucus go in. house, maybe. Interesting. Somebody's house? Somebody's house. Okay. <laughs> Larvation house, maybe. Somebody yeah. lost their house. They're just moving. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been seeing quite, uh, not so much biology here, but the little biology we have seen are like dead sponges. And somebody wants to know if a sponge is able to regrow. Yes. Mm. Oh, I got a yes. 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 <sighs> sponges can do some amazing things. Uh, one of the classic experiments we do in invertebrate zoology laboratories uh, pretty sure most invertebrate zoology laboratories probably do it. at the beginning of the semester you take up a take a sponge blend it up 
uh, basically uh, in, a, in a blender and then let it sit out uh, making sure to keep it moist um, over the course of the semester it will reconstitute start to reconstitute itself wow that's awesome uh, yeah it's quite the science experiment So, Nick, why is there so much uh, manganese coating versus something else like iron oxide? Well, it's considered a ferro manganese um, coating um, <laughs> one versus the other. Uh, I would guess, um, and this is just a guess, that uh, iron would be uh, more so to source to a, a deeper upwelling that it may, might be closer to a mantle source. Um, but again, that's just a kind of a shot oh, in the dark. I, I'm not 100% sure here, about so that So this, this whole area will zoom. Okay, go for zoom. Is there something very tiny underneath this rock Yeah, here? that's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, that's interesting. That like some sponge debris. Maybe. Can you go wide? I'll yeah. land and we'll get a better view. And maybe some more samples on the yeah. porch. The thing on the <laughs> bottom of the rock, I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't look living. But the top of the rock might be a sponge of some type. Okay, we'll start at the top. Okay. Okay, go for zoom. Oh, yep. It's a decapita decapitated sponge stalk. Keep going. Yikes. I've seen a lot of kind of taken out sponges. I know. It's very bleak over here. Yeah. Okay, go away. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to take another look at that little thing? Uh, Under the rock. If you have a second, yeah, sure. I'll that's see if I can first set it down. See if I can get us down there. The pan and tilt is slow at the step. Go for zoom. The weeest little sponge stalk. Yeah. <laughs> the weeest one I ever did see. All right. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So wow. A bunch or a coral stalk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not in good shape. Teeny tiny. Uh, can I do a DVR reset while we're here? Yeah. Teeny tiny, itsy bitsy. <laughs> the weeest. The yeah. weeest. Someone said rock pimple. Oh. <laughs> can we squeeze it? Yeah, can we squeeze it? Another dead sponge. It's tough out here. Hooray. Where where did you see that, Steve? The the dead sponge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go for zoom. Type of glass sponge. So many formerly known as sponge. <laughs> well, it's, it's still a sponge, just, yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Seen better days. Yeah. I didn't set up properly for that. Sorry. Gently used. Gently <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen minutes left. And I'm hoping that the sunrise holds out. Mm -hmm. I want to see that in person. Yeah, that cloud to the uh, top right, right is just stunning. Yep.
Now I wonder, uh, with all these this, uh, nodule, crusty bits, crusty nuggets, materials, is it going to be easier or harder to find a, uh, a datable rock? I don't think that would uh, affect. Should we get a rock before the, like, yes. one last rock before yeah. the watch is over? Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of yes. I thought you would never ask. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, do not wait for me to ask, mm -hmm. ever. I know. Just um. chime right in. <laughs> we will make it happen if we possibly can. Even um. if it seems like a ridiculous time, you should still ask. If we have a chance, can we look here first? Yes. There's a white something underneath yeah, that rock. Yeah, I see what you're looking at. Okay, it's sediment, never mind. Oh, no, you don't like it anymore? No, fool okay. again. <laughs> Where are we going to get a rock? I mean, I can grab one right here if you want to drop down. Okay. Uh, yeah, right here it is. Anywhere, yeah. You can get one Anywhere? here. I can get one down here. If okay. You saw one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go up just a little further. Sure. Yeah, this is a decent one. Just because we can. Steve, what's your take on why we're seeing so many dead sponges? Somebody wants to know, maybe is it a predator that's taken them out? No, I think they just, uh, with sponges, I think, you know, we're just, uh, we are in somewhat of a talus field and things fall down slope. Sponges also are a part of that group. That uh, front and center rock looks beautiful. Slope. Right on the lasers. Right on the lasers? Yeah, let's go for that. Cool. Is it? Yeah. Unless there's two rocks there. Oh. Oh. They're yeah, maybe. This isn't one rock right here. I'll, uh, I'll have a look. Yeah, that looks big. <laughs> Give it a gander. <laughs> How big is it? Give it a poke. Uh, we'll find out. Well, the well lasers no, are right we know. On it, so. They're all loose. Oh, that's, that's great. It's probably close to 20. Mm -hmm. Surface measurement. Pressure Nick. to take a nosedive. Nick wanted a big Christmas present today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get a big one every now and then. But follow up on the second uh, beauty oh not as big as it looks yeah i mean yeah where is this going starboard bow box uh, okay if it can fit in one of the smaller ones sorry say that again please uh, starboard bow box if it can fit in one of the smaller ones okay we'll do One for two. Yep. Thank you. Gabby, do you want to be stopped for the handover? Or uh, not necessarily. Question? Okay. I'll put Just uh, as long as we've got a nice setup, I'm fine with that. Cool. Bridge now. Oh. Boom. Five zero meters can be added to zero one zero. Take over sample tray? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, sample tray in. Great. All right. Great collection. That's Almost it. After the watch change, we'll. Uh, I don't know what's the procedure here on the slope. Do we need to pause the move or can we? We just discussed it, and we'll do it in motion. Okay. Trevor really? basically told us we were giving him too nice of a handover. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, here. There was a fish. 30 degree slope. Yeah. Uh, like, move, he, yeah. wants more, he wants to see more chaos at handover. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Need a little bit of excitement in your life, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
there's only so much I'm willing to do in a handover, <laughs> but uh, like early in the cruise, it can help to like keep the chaos to a minimum. But at this point, everybody knows what they're doing. I like my handovers to have Hercules in sight and no wraps in the tether, preferably no imminent danger <laughs> <laughs> to humans or vehicles. Check, check. That's like checks. the bare minimum. Yeah. That's fair. Sounds like reasonable criteria. Yeah. All right. So can I have a one last measure of how much progress we've made For so you, far? anything. Oh. Oh. I'm keeping track. Every watch is going to be graded. On, on <laughs> now I'm not sure if I want to give you these numbers. <laughs> you can just tell them anything. Yeah. You <laughs> I can see Oh, here's back. a living animal. What? Oh. Right here. Oh, oh yeah. look at this. Oh. Yeah, so th we collected this last year. Um, oh. This is a solitary zoantherian, we think. A solitary Zoan hydroid? Yeah, zo zoantherian, like, okay. a, uh, like a, like a zoanthid. Um, oh, nice. Interestingly, uh, I don't know if anyone's worked on it yet, but it's such a unique thing. Zoom? It was observed a, a few times during capstone, and uh, and we sampled it last year on a on a rock because uh, it was too hard to pull off, actually. And uh, I imagine so. Yeah. Wow. And so we do have a full voucher of this. How uh, did you get it off the the old s s scrape and slurp? We took the whole rock. Oh wow! Okay. Well, nice. it, it was a small rock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's really right neat. Now. It's got a really yeah, nice haircut. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah so th this is an interesting animal. I, I would really like to work on them eventually, but it's not my okay, uh, priority right now. Good eye. Good eye, mate. It's so long. What kind of work do you want to do on it, Steve? Just to identify it, if it's, if it's been identified yet. Yeah, I'm not sure. This, uh, at least this is the second individual I've seen on this cruise. So they're not common, but they're more characteristic of the deeper bathial depths. So what was that, that data uh, now? Yeah, um, do you want it with the current move in there or just? Yeah, whatever we finish the move in. Okay, um, right now it's 400 meters. Uh, we've got uh, 25 meters left on this move. Yeah. Very nice. We almost doubled the pace we needed to do to finish the dive. Nice. Probably because there was no biology. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't say that part. <laughs> there wasn't a ton of things to like stop and zoom on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, it's good progress, I think. So what you're saying is no biology, no problems. <laughs> well. No, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. I don't know, but have you no tried bio, to make a rock no highlight recently? Bio, no bio, no cry. Oh, good. What is this instigating going on oh, in the front Oh, jelly thing in the water. Jelly thing, let's look at it. How about a sponge? That's the, There's a sponge. Yeah. Wait, that's a curl first, on top of first, something. Okay, first, I will, uh, I'll zoom life. on the jelly thing. Go for zoom. I was going to go guess. for the sponge, but I guess the jelly is moving, so I there like won't be another out. shot at that. Oh, is, is that? That? Yeah. that might be, a, looks like a liration or something. But it's got something. You can push in a little further. That's a shrimp with, on top of. Oh, oh it's eating yeah. something. something. Oh, sea star. And then there's a sea star. Yep. Cute. Okay, go ahead. A shrimp in a barrel. There's a sea star <laughs> right. here. We're, we got we're life. Off back we got here. life. We got problems. Oh, okay. Bye, science. I won't distract them. We got all the life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't we switch the watches? Go for Zoom. Looks 
Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. There it is. Yeah, it's so, I guess, unusual for me now to see a brittle star just on a rock, like instead of being on a coral or something, but mm. that's just the type of area that we're diving in right now. Hi, Julie. Thanks for watching. And hello, Jesse. That's an interesting rock. Whoa, that's a really interesting rock. Oh, okay, it's where a are you sponge. looking? It's a... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the dead sponge. That's, that's sponge. a dead, dead that's sponge. so dead, it's got ferromanganese on it. Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Go for zoom. That is definitely Crepid. previously known as sponge. <laughs> Was it ever known as sponge? <laughs> old. Once upon a time, yes. Once upon a time. Years ago. Okay. <laughs> Onward. Onward. That was cool. That was cool. They might want that, but nope. <laughs> yeah, so the chat the is correcting us. Yeah. There are there's definitely biology here, just too tiny for us to see, but for sure if we collected some samples and um, Maybe got a few inches off the uh, top part of the sediment. There would definitely be life there, but too tiny for us to see on these dives. Okay, we're finishing a move, so just let it happen. Yeah, sure. It's gonna be spicy. <laughs> Could make it extra spicy. I don't know. We're at three thousand meters. Put in another move. Let's Keep it moving. Live a little. Bridge it's, now. It's, the next watch is can absolutely handle it. <laughs> Live a little. Live a little. <laughs> Go for zoom. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, good morning. Um, can we do uh, another five zero meters to zero one zero? A lovely sponge. So we're doing a watch change now. The uh, 8 to 12 crew is hopping on here in just a moment. And they will continue on this journey of exploring this unnamed seamount. Do we still want that move or no? Okay. Someone's asking, what's the most unexpected thing you have seen on a dive? Um, Double octopus. <laughs> Double octopus. It wasn't unexpected, just a nice... Yeah, I guess it kind of, yeah, I, I really wasn't expecting to see a demo octopus. Or I like guess, that. yeah, beyond my expectations. Yeah. I was optimistic, but that was just cool. Yeah, so we saw a three in one dive, um, I think that was last week. That was really, really cool. <laughs> Steve was telling us yesterday that he saw, they found a coconut once at the bottom of the sea. So that, I think, is pretty unexpected. And that white thing that we just saw, that was a sponge. I don't quite know what kind of a sponge exactly, but definitely the first live one that we have seen so far in this dive. So again, it's been really sparse in terms of biology, but as you can see, lots of interesting rock formations, very nuggety. So as we're signing out here for the four to eight watch, thank you all so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for enduring that blue water if you've been with us since four. Uh, that was a wild ride. And yeah, happy exploring and we'll see you again soon.